I was thinking of making a guide to using the Kasatka submarine, with Savage Cabbage. It being new, and fairly different to anything we've had before, the prospect of making an in-depth guide was quite daunting. I decided we should first look at what its limitations and weaknesses are. You always want to know what you can and can't count on. This would be an extremely inefficient use of explosive sniper rounds, though it does take less than I thought it might. If a player can see the submarine, even through a scope, they can probably be hit by a guided missile. It could be a minor irritant, but more than anything it's a reminder to stay underwater whenever possible. Being underwater will protect you from this, and many other threats. RPGs have a relatively short range. If you're getting hit by them, you're too close to land. There's a rumor that throwing a sticky bomb down the missile hatch will destroy the submarine in one hit. I had mixed results, however, so I can't really confirm whether or not this is true.
At any rate, players can't use bombs while diving. Once again, going underwater protects you. There is a chance someone could go off radar while you're surfaced slash using a GDM. This reinforces another point, whenever someone goes off radar, and is after you, it's a good idea to go underwater for safety, even if you have to stop what you're doing. Six missiles from this is rather alarming, but it should be pointed out that the armor glitch that plagued the Avenger can be a thing on this submarine. Nevertheless, it once again shows why you should be underwater whenever possible, as well as some distance away from land. You should be wary of Chernobog blips on the radar, and always head underwater if a suspicious enemy goes off the radar. Fast aircraft armed with bombs, cannons, or even just missiles, these aircraft are a major threat to the submarine when surfaced. A stinky little Mark II can also be problematic, though can be paralyzed by the periscope missiles if attended to quickly enough. Luckily for you, bombs blow up if they hit the surface of the water. Even going underwater slightly will protect you. When an enemy aircraft approaches, it's best to go underwater. If an enemy aircraft goes off radar, it's probably heading your way, and you should go underwater. Jets with explosive cannons are extremely dangerous to submarines. You shouldn't count on surviving even one attack. If you do, you definitely won't survive another. Unlike bombs, jet cannons can reach beyond the surface of the water. This makes things trickier. You have to be quite deep underwater to be safe from lasers slash hydras. We tested a variety of different depths. You yourself have to decide your balance between safety and practicality, but I personally prefer to stay deep. It should be noted that Cabbage can only see me on his radar due to being friends with me. At this depth, no tryhard will see you on radar. From our testing, it didn't seem as though thermal vision helped to detect underwater submarines either. Still, I personally prefer to stay very low. A depth of 400 feet will make you virtually impossible to hit by jet cannons. 
Such a depth will require you to be quite far from land, closer to land, the water is too shallow. It also takes some time to reach this depth. If an enemy laser or hydra is nearby, don't surface. Not even for a second. Not unless the jet is heavily distracted. He destroyed the tail of his aircraft in that attack. This is despite being able to see me on radar. Enemy submarines are another big threat, especially if they're using guided missiles from afar. These missiles can't travel underwater. If you have a friend at the helm, you'll be underwater 99% of the time. It's harder when you're on your own. If an enemy submarine hinders your heroic guided missile trolling like this too much, I would suggest fast traveling away. Should the enemy follow, you may have to dive deep and go on the attack. Kasatka submarines are also armed with torpedoes, and periscope missiles. Periscope missiles are only available above water. Torpedoes can only hit underwater targets. Both have a much shorter range than guided missiles. Both will take many hits to destroy another submarine, to the point where counting them is unnecessary. The submarines are also far too clumsy to dodge each other. Aside from sneaking up on an enemy, submarine versus submarine fights will usually be a simple drain of each other's health, with whoever having the most left winning. If you don't think that's going to be you, thanks to damage from previous attacks, you have two options I can see. The safe one is to simply fast travel away. The second one is to go off radar, and rush down to your submarine's moon pool, where you can exit with a stored Toreador for a surprise attack. The Toreador will be difficult for a submarine to take down. If you don't have a Toreador, a Stromberg can be stored in the moon pool as a substitute instead. As previously mentioned, a Toreador poses a significant threat to a Kasatka submarine. 
Although Toreador torpedoes will take a lot of hits to bring down the submarine, the vehicle itself will massively outmaneuver the Kasatka. I would suggest fast traveling, or going off radar to launch a counter Toreador attack from the moon pool, as you'll see here. skills is required. No problem. I'll scramble the signal for one minute. It can help to keep your Kasatka deep underwater, so the enemy is confused and has to search around for you. What about the orbital cannon? Can we stay safe from this by going deep underwater? The answer appears to be yes. Perhaps it's just inconsistent though? I'll show you what happened when I tried. Couldn't even see or hear it. Maybe we can spot it in the Rockstar editor? Perhaps I'll have to look into this some more. At any rate, even if an orbital cannon hits you, it will only destroy your submarine. It won't kill you, even if you're at the helm. I hope you found this useful, and will stay tuned for the next part of the guide, which covers the Kasatka submarine's weapons, and how best to use them. This will be followed by a final part, on general use slash tactics and techniques.